G'day, I'm James. So here's some straight up curriculum math, but in the light of being a 21st century citizen. Today we want to talk about graphing factored polynomials. Why not? Okay, so this is a very standard topic in a pre-calculus type class to graph something like this. Well, actually, nothing like this. This is way harder than anything that's in the standard curriculum, but let's go straight forward. Let's go for this particular graph right here. Please sketch a fairly decent graph of y equals x minus 50 to the 17th power, times x minus 7 to the 202th power, times x plus 3 to the 99th power, plus times x plus 15 to the 3003th power, times x plus 22 to the 42nd power. Whoa! Whoa! My point is, that's just as fine an example to do in any aspect of the curriculum of graphing factored polynomials. So this is a polynomial about things about powers of x, nice positive whole number powers of x, um, and actually factored into these individual terms. Great. All right, so here I am. I'm a 21st century student asked, with a task to, asked to complete a task something like this. All right, I'm a 21st century student. My first response is, why? Why should I sketch a fairly decent graph of that thing? I don't want to. That's a valid response. All right, here's my second response. If I really need to, I'm a citizen of the 21st century. I'm going to go to Desmos or Wolfram Alpha and use technology to solve it. If the goal is to get a picture of this thing, use 21st century technology. If that's the goal, great, done, finished. Okay, but then I might say to myself, okay, this is actually kind of an intriguing puzzle. As scary as this looks, obviously the author of this puzzle, namely me to myself, thinks I'm capable of doing it. There must be some interesting thinking going on there. So here's the thing. Here's a very straight up curriculum topic, but let's make it about the thinking. It's not about getting the answers. Go to software algebra, get the answers, graph the thing on a calculator, great. But there's got to be deep thinking here. So I'm going to treat this as a, pos a puzzle to actually inform my thinking for 21st century living. Okay, how's that for a sell? All right, so, okay, so, so first of all, people never talk about this, but there are two fundamental first steps to solving any problem in maths or life. Namely, one, step one, be your honest human self and have an emotional reaction to what stares you in the face. I'm staring at this, I've already had my emotional reaction, I don't want to do it. It looks scary, it terrifies me. I just don't know what to do. That is my human reaction. Acknowledge your human reaction. We should all do that no matter what problem you're facing in life. First of all, acknowledge you are a human being and are reacting to it. So be very clear on your emotions. But then step two, take a deep breath and do something. In fact, this is my greatest wish upon the world, to teach the world how to just do something, to get past their emotions and take a first step of any kind any kind of first step. Now it might be relevant to the problem or irrelevant to the problem. Whatever you need to do to handle your emotions, do it. And then eventually you'll start coming to do you know, actions that might be relevant. Okay, so first of all, I am terrified of this problem. It does look really scary, but I can do something. I know I have to graph the thing and I'm gonna do it by hand. So I'll at least draw a set of axes. There, I've done something, woohoo, great. There's a set of axes, an x-axis and a y-axis, great. You know what, actually I realized I could do a little bit more because there are some actual x values just staring me in the face. I mean, without knowing anything, I can at least see that x equals 50 is interesting, and x equals seven is interesting, x equals negative three, x equals negative 15, and x equals negative 22 are also interesting. In fact, if I put in x equals 50, I get zero to the 70th power, zero times a whole bunch of stuff, zero. Oh, I can at least plot one point. At x equals 50, y is zero. Bingo, I've got one data point. I've started sketching the graph. This is fabulous. X equals seven, something times zero times something times something, something will still be zero. So at seven, it's also zero. At negative three, it's also zero. At negative 15, it's also net zero. And at negative 22, it's also zero. I've now plotted five points on the graph. I'm feeling good. I've done something. It's something that's even relevant to the problem. Brilliant. Um, in fact, as I look at this, I can realize that no other value, like if I put in x equals 10, none of this would be zero for x equals 10. So this would be totally non-zero. In fact, I can see this is the only places where it's going to be zero. Okay, don't know if that's helpful, but that's a piece of information. All right, um, are there any other obvious x values staring me in the face when I look at this beast? And um, not really, except, um, so I kind of like going to extremes. When I put in like x equals 10 billion, like let's do some really extreme number way over here. What sort of thing would come out? Well, it would be basically 10 billion minus 50. It's basically 10 million, 10 billion to the 70th power. 
10 billion minus 7. It's basically 10 billion to the 200 tooth power times 10 billion to the 99th power. Basically 10 billion is 10 billion. This is going to be a huge, huge number. So if x is really off to the extreme to the right and the positive values, I'm going to get a really positive y value coming out. So the graph must be getting really huge and positive. Further right I go, huge positive values. I'm starting to get a graph. Uh, when x is the other extreme, like a really huge negative value, like negative 10 billion. Negative 10 billion here would be a negative number to the 70th power, so it will be negative. Negative 10 billion here to a positive, uh, to, a, ooh, to an even power, 202 would be positive. Negative, positive, negative. Negative 10 billion basically to the 99th power is negative. This is also an odd exponent, negative 10 billion to 373 would be negative, positive. So what would be negative, positive, negative, negative, positive. Net thing is negative. I bet if x is negative 10 billion, I'm going to get a really, really huge negative number coming out. So as I go to the, this other extreme, my graph must be becoming really huge and negative. Wow. It goes up to the positives, goes down to the negatives, and it's at zero at these points. So maybe there's something like this. Maybe that's what the graph is. Well, that would be amazing. That would be wonderful. In fact, oh, oh, I can just check myself. Um, well, if I did put in like x equals 10, I won't actually work out the number, but it's either going to be above the graph or it's going to be below the graph because it has to be zero and zero there and never touch the graph again. The, sorry, the axis here. Sorry, axis will be either above the axis or below the axis. So if I just try 10, I get negative 40 to the 17th power, so it'll be negative uh, 10. Uh, if x is 10, there'll be a 3 to a uh, to 2, that's positive. A 10 would be positive to the 99th power, positive, positive. Oh, I can see the whole thing is negative down here. So it's actually negative in this region. Uh, what about between negative 3 and 7? If I do like say, well, I'll put in 0. In this case, if I put in 0, I can see I will have uh, negative 50 to the odd power, negative. Uh, negative 7 to an even power, positive. Uh, 0. 3, oh, 3 to any power is positive. 15 to any power, any power, the whole thing is Ooh, negative again. So it's negative here and it's negative here. Well, I'm glad I'm doing this. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, let's try between negative 3 and negative 15. Like, I don't know, negative 10 or something. Negative 10 this time. All right. Negative 10. Negative 60 to an odd power. Negative. Uh, negative 17 to an even power. Positive. Uh, negative 7 to an odd power. Negative. Uh, what are we doing? Negative 10. That'd be positive 5 to uh, positive power. Positive. Uh, positive. Whole thing here is positive. Oh, one last check. I'm going to do like negative 20. And by the way, I can actually, I'm going to save myself some work. A positive number or a negative number to an even power is always going to be positive. Always, not, it is not even, it's always going to be positive. So I don't even to bother doing that work again. In fact, I'm starting to see shortcuts now. This is great. But let's try negative 20. Uh, negative 70 to an odd, negative. Uh, negative 20, negative 20. Oh, that's a negative 17 to an odd is negative. Um, uh, negative uh, 20 is negative 5 to an odd is negative. Negative times positive times negative times negative times positive is the whole thing is negative. So it's negative there as well. So what's my graph doing? Well, it must be coming down to zero. It's negative for a while. Then it's negative again, but it has to be at zero there. So I guess it just bounces. And then it comes over here. It has to be positive for this part. Okay, positive. And then it has to go down to being negative. And then it has to be negative again. I guess that's my graph. And I guess I've just drawn a fairly decent sketch of that graph. Wow. Wow, I love that. Now the thing is, we don't actually know what's going on down here and over here and so forth. So maybe the graph is actually doing something crazy like this, for all I know. But given the information I've got so far, that would be a totally valid sketch of the graph. That's all the features I've got. And in fact, you know, you might need with more mathematical tools, I might be able to figure out what's really going on between these zeros. Uh, but for now, that's a decent enough graph. I've licked the problem using problem solving skills. So even straight up curriculum maths can actually teach me about developing the confidence to, confidence to solve problems. All right, so I suggest you now go and start graphing graphs of factored quadratics and other factored things that might be in your curriculum. Because actually, as a problem solving process, it's kind of cool.